God, I can't, I can't believe we haven't caught anything off this. Really? There we go. Yeah, see? You know they're in here. Boom, 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 boom. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Come hither, you heathen. He's mad at me. It's a good fish. It is a really good fish. Hope I don't have him hooked badly, though. At least I hope not. I hope not, dude. Because I don't want to do that to you. Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com and today I want to talk to you about the top seven baits that I use in the summer to catch fish throughout the entire season. Now granted there are a lot of baits out there that catch a lot of fish and it can be kind of confusing as to what bait to throw and when. So I know that these seven baits that I'm about to tell you, I can go out with just these and I know I'm gonna catch fish no matter what the circumstances. So let's get right into it. The first bait that I want to talk to you about is a plastic, you know, a plastic bait. This could be any kind of creature bait, like a, say, a rage craw or a, maybe a, a, a yum dinger, or it could be maybe a, oh, a plastic worm or a lizard. They, they come in so many different shapes and sizes. This is one of the reasons why Texas Rig placed plastic bait is one of my favorites. In addition, you can get them in different colors and different sizes. And so you've got this whole variety that can adapt to any situation that you're in, whether it's a bright sunny day in clear water or it's dingy water and it's, and it's windy out, you can find the bait to fish in this area. But not only that, the versatility of where you can fish it. So in the summertime, bass can be pretty much anywhere. They can be buried up thick in weeds. And this is where a Texas rig bait really shines because it'll slither through the weeds without getting hung up in those weeds. Or maybe you've got matted vegetation in the middle of summer and towards the end of summer. You can punch through that mat, put a half ounce to ounce and a half, half bullet head weight, and you can you throw it up in the air, let it land on that, that matted vegetation, it'll punch right through it. A, a good bait to use for that is maybe the rage bug or you know beaver style bait because it's sort of an arrow shaped body if you look at it. It's kind of a wedge shape and it's perfect for punching through that, that vegetation to get down to where those bass are hanging out underneath it. Smaller baits, you can skip it underneath docks, for example, or say the fish are hanging out deeper and they do this a lot in the summertime. They'll go out to you know, 10, 20, 30 feet of water and hang out on ridges and humps and brake lines and maybe at the end of a long tapering point or something like that. Well, you can just rig a Texas rig bait at the end of a Carolina rig or maybe put it on a drop shot or a, maybe a split shot rig or something like that just to get that bait down to where they're at and then you can work it depending on their activity level. If they're really aggressive, you can work it fast and if they're, you know, not in a, a neutral to negative feeding mode, well, you can slow it down and just slowly crawl it across the bottom and get those bites. So it's because of the versatility, the different colors you can have, the different styles and actions of bait, plus you can fish it throughout the entire water, water column. This is why I like Texas rig baits. Okay, another kind of bait that I like to throw in the summertime is a deep diving crankbait. Now there's a variety of reasons for that, but the main reason is during the summertime, man, the bass have the feed bag on. Their whole sole purpose in life during the summertime is to eat and at the top of their menu is bait fish. And there's very few baits out there that do a better job of imitating a bait fish than a crankbait. Now, I like deep diving crankbaits, ones that dive deeper than 10 feet for a variety of reasons. First of all, a lot of times the bass will hang out in deeper structure. They'll be out in that 15 to 20 foot zone, maybe even deeper, <clears throat> and they'll be at the tops of humps and ridges, but they'll be in rock piles, maybe some laydowns, or at the edge of a creek channel. Or maybe at the end, a long tapering point, something like that. Well, a deep diving crankbait can get down to where they're at and you can elicit a strike that way, especially if you can get it down to where there's a school of them feeding on bait fish, man. You, you're going to have a great day fishing deep diving crankbaits. But I also like to fish them shallower than 10 feet, even though it dives deeper than that. Where I really like to fish is when, the, when it's muddy, where, the, where it's got a soft bottom along a weed edge. You can throw it up there and three feet of water or so and let it dig into that silt. It just does this. It 
digs and dives and darts and does all this erratic action. And I'm telling you what, I can't tell you how many bass I've caught that if you know, you're right along that weed line and that brings out usually really big bass. They come diving out of that, that weed cover to pounce on that bait. It just gets their attention and triggers that instinctual bite. So it's a great way to fish them that way. Or like say for example, you're fishing in a, where there's chunk rock or riprap. Throw it out there and get it down to that, those rocks and let it bang off the rocks. You let it hit, it'll, it'll do a, you know, pause briefly and then ricochet off that rock in an erratic motion. And that sudden change of action will often trigger a strike. So it's a great way to fish riprap if you're throwing deep diving crankbaits that dive deeper than where that rock is and you just bang it off that bottom. Deep diving crankbaits, very versatile. You can fish at different depths. That's why I gotta have it in my, my arsenal during the summertime. All right, let's talk about another favorite bait of mine in the summertime, and that's the jig. Now, I, I know a jig works really well throughout the entire year, and I do fish jigs throughout the entire year. But in the summertime, this is when you get to open up the playbook, and you get to fish them all the different ways that you can. And there's really four different types of jigs that I, that I focus on in the summertime, <clears throat> and that is, let's just, let's just go through them. The first one is a, is a round ball jig, jig head. This I'll use in rocky areas where it's just you know, a rocky shoreline, maybe it's riprap, something like that. It doesn't get hung up as much because it doesn't have any sharp edges or appendages or any weird angles on it, it's just round. So it doesn't get wedged in the rocks as easily. So you're not gonna get hung up as much, but even when you do and you just pull on it, it just turns the head, the eye towards you and it usually comes right back out. It, it's easy to get unstuck. So this is a great bait to use when the bass are hanging out in those rocky areas and feeding on, on insects and bait fish that are hanging out in that area. That's when I use a round head ball jig. So another one that I like to use is a football jig. Football jig, I'll use that in deeper water where it's maybe a soft bottom or a hard bottom, something like that. And I like to just let it, when the bass really aren't super aggressive, I'll put maybe a craw trailer on the end of it and drag it on the bottom. That football jig, it just kind of wobbles back and forth. And it looks like a little crawdad just making its way on the bottom. And that's a great way to get bass to bite, especially when they're deeper and they're hanging off those, those rock piles or maybe they're you know, by a point or something like that or hanging by a creek channel. Just bring it along our deep weed lines. I've had weed lines as deep as 20 feet. Bring it on the edge of that weed line. Just slowly crawling along and a lot of times you catch bass that way. Another bait, uh, another jig that I like to use is the swim jig. Swim jigs are, you know, it's kind of a hybrid jig. Uh, it is a jig head, but really it's designed, you put a little paddle tail uh, plastic bait on the end of it, and I'll take that and use it kind of like a crankbait. I'll go along a weed edge, and you just throw it out and wind it back in. Just a nice steady retrieve. A lot of times that's all you need to do to get bites. So you can bring it along docks, you can throw it across flats, maybe a stumpy flat, or maybe an area with a scattered chunk rock, or it's even good at fishing riprap. But because of the weight on it, you can fish it deeper too. You can let it sink all the way down and get down to those deeper depths where the bass may be hanging in the summertime and still bring it across. It looks like a little bait fish. Just wind it along there and catch a lot of bass that way. So swim jig is, is, is a, one of my top favorites in the summertime. But another jig that I like to throw is the weedless jig it's, you know, because it's weedless. And a lot of times in the summer, that's where the bass are hanging out. They congregate in and around weeds. It could be coontail, it could be uh, hydrilla or milfoil or any kind of, you know, lily pads, what have you, because that's where the bait fish are sometimes, that's where the insects are, and that's where the bass are going to go to feed. You can take the jig and work it through all this, these weeds without getting hung up as much as you would with other baits. So that's what makes a, a weedless jig or weed jig so effective in the summertime. And this is why I really like throwing jigs in the summer because you can, as you can tell, you can fish them in all the different types of circumstances and categories and types of covers and depths that the bass are in. Plus they come in all kinds of colors too to fit whatever uh, light penetration you're getting. And you can match the forage, the color of the forage <laughs> jigs are really good to use in the summertime. Okay, another type of bait that I like to use is frogs and toads. Now, I know technically they're two different baits, but I tend to lump them into one category because there's, they look similar, you fish them similar fashion, and you fish them in the same kind of areas. So I tend to lump it in the same sort of thing. So don't get mad at me because I'm 
picking two different lures. I know they're different. But uh, frogs, let's start with that. Frog is, is a hollow body frog. I like it because it floats and it's weedless. You know, the, the, the hooks are right up against the body. The collapsible body just, you know, when the bass crushes it, they get impaled on it right away. But because of that weedless nature and because it floats, you can throw it across heavy, heavy cover. So for example, when hydrilla and when milfoil, when it mats over the top and gets that thick cover, that canopy where the bass are hanging out underneath it, that's a great time to throw a frog. Throw it over the top of, the, of that matted vegetation and just wind it back in. That's all you got to do. And the bass will see it and they're tracking up underneath it and they'll blast right through that canopy to nail that frog. And it's exhilarating. It's an exciting way to catch fish. It, it startles you. Uh, it's so much fun to see that strike. And that's you know, one of the main reasons why I, why I really like throwing it in the summertime. But also because it floats, you can bring it across those pockets where there's an opening, or maybe you bring it across sparse lily pads, for example, and there's an opening in there. You can let it sit, just sit in place and just hang out. And all you do is take your rod, give it a little twitch every now and then to make it look alive. And a lot of times you can entice reluctant bass to come up and blast it. They just can't stand it. It looks like a helpless creature that's struggling to stay afloat. And <laughs> that's, that's an easy meal for bass. So it's, it's a great way to catch fish when they're up hanging around this thick vegetation. Frog is it. Now toad, very similar. Toads are hollow, are, are, they're, they're solid bodies, but they have those legs because that kicking action. And so when you bring it across the water, it kind of gurgles, real subtle. You can again throw it the same thing over the top of the matted vegetation, reel it back in. It, it causes a bit more of a commotion. So again, bass will come up, blast it through that vegetation. The big difference is when you bring it across a hole or an opening in the weeds, kill it and it'll just let it flutter down. Just it'll slowly sink, sink down. And if a bass is tracking it, here it comes right in his face. And he has to pounce on, he has to react. And so it's a great way to catch fish. You say, for example, they don't necessarily want to blast through that vegetation. They'll eat it when they fall when it falls through that opening. So frogs and toads, favorite baits to throw during the summertime. All right, another bait that I like to break out in the summertime and I always have tied on is a popper, you know, popper type bait. And there's a variety of reasons for that. First of all, like I said, bass are feeding on bait fish this time of year. And a popper mimics a bait fish, it, it, actually one that's injured or dying on the surface, which bass are predators and that triggers that instinctual bite. So you just throw it out there and twitch it and pop it back. And it creates that disturbance on the surface and looks like a little bait fish and the bass will clock it. Now, what I like to do is I, I change it a little bit. Now, if it's calm out, the water or the water's really clear or say for example low light conditions that sort of thing i like to take the the popper throw it out there and i'll bring it back at a slow cadence throw it out and let it stop and wait for the wing, the, the rings to dissipate just wait 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 and then give it a little twitch just a little just nudge it give it a little pop and this is really good if the sun's if it's a bright sunny day because that's if you watch a dying bait fish, that's what it does. It just kind of struggles a little bit. It doesn't like go crazy and flail about. So just give it those little slight subtle pauses and little twitches with long pauses in between when the water's glass smooth like that. And a lot of times while you're waiting for those rings to dissipate, <laughs> you know, you'll just ah! <laughs> you know, it's really exciting. Uh, but that's that's often what it takes to trigger a bite. On the other hand, when it's when you got a little bit of chop in the water, or maybe the water's you know a little bit dingier, then I like to up it. I like to move it a little bit more and create a little more noise and commotion to get those bass to, to focus in on that because uh, they won't be able to see it as much if you're not moving it. So I'll just throw it in and just as I'm reeling, just pop, 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 pop as I'm bringing it back, just steady all the way across the surface. Especially if you've got like submerged weeds or something, you bring it across a submerged weed bed. That's a great time to be throwing it. You can just get those bass to you just draw them right out of those weeds and they'll crush it just sometime between where you were landed and back to the boat just expect it because they're going to plop it you know clock it at any time during that 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 retrieve and it's a lot of fun to fish it so that's one of the reasons why i like it but another reason why i like to have that popper handy is particularly in the summertime bass will blast balls of bait fish out on the surface and it might be away from the the shoreline 
but keep an eye on it or just listen with your ears for bass that are busting the surface. And when they are and they've chasing those bait and they've got them corralled, they do it in schools, they get those bait fish corralled to the surface and you'll see them jumping, you'll see bass blasting it, grab that popper and throw it right in the middle of that frenzy and I guarantee you, you're gonna get blasted. It is so much fun, but it's you've gotta have it rigged and ready on the boat. So that's why I've just got it laying there waiting for that opportunity because I know it's coming and when it does, you gotta capitalize on it with a popper. So that's why I really like having it in the summertime. All right, so another key bait that I like to use during the summertime is the Sanko or you know the Yum Dinger, that sort of thing. Now, a lot of guys will fish it in the spring. They fish it up shallow, because that's where the bass are, and they fish it in sparse lily pads or over the top of submerged weeds, long weed edges, maybe in a stumpy flat, something like that. And those are good areas to fish in the summertime. But unfortunately, a lot of guys, what they do when summer comes around is they put that lure away and don't fish it again until the spring. And now, I think that's a mistake because this lure is very versatile. You can fish it in a variety of different ways in the summer. I mean, sure, you can fish it in the same areas that you fish in the spring, uh, along docks. I, my favorite, I like to skip it under docks. You know, I've caught a lot of good fish doing it that way. But, you know, a lot of times in the summer, fish will move off into deeper water and they'll hang out in deeper structure. So like rock piles, or they'll be on the top of humps, or maybe a long, long tapering point, or right on the drop off to a creek or something, or, or a river. Well. Just be creative. You can put it in a, in a different kind of rig to get it down to where the fish are. So for example, you can put it in the back end of a Carolina rig, or you can put it on a drop shot rig or a split shot rig. Uh, sometimes I'll even put it on a football head jig, something like that to get the it down to the bass. And then you can fish it a variety of different speeds and cadences to attract the fish. So and you get a lot of bites that way, man. You can clean house. If the fish are sitting on the top of a, of a hump, and you can get that bait down to them, man, you could have yourself a great day. So it's, it's because of the versatility and the, the ability to fish at different depths and different speeds during the summertime makes it one of my top baits in the summer. Okay, another top bait that I like to use in the summertime is a square bell. Now, square bell, I know it, it's a crankbait, but I like to put it in its own category for a variety of reasons but primarily because of where and how you fish it. It's a lot different than other crankbaits. Square bill for one, first of all, it's got a square bill. Now, the reason it has that is because you can fish it through cover. See how, see this body, see how thick that is? It, can you see the hooks? It doesn't, you can't see them. It, it actually blocks the hooks. So for that reason, what, what it does with the square bill, say you come up against a branch or tree limb, it comes up, hits that limb, and then it pulls up like this. Look at this, the hooks are completely, yeah, I'm not hooking my finger. It blocks it, the body blocks it, the bill blocks it, the hooks are protected. So you can bring it across branches, tree limbs, that sort of thing and cover, and, don't, and you won't get hung up as much that you would say using a round bill crankbait. So a round bill, when it hits that same branch, it'll roll it'll roll a little bit and now the hook becomes exposed and I'm not going to do it because I don't want to hook myself, but it'll do that and then that hook will embed itself in that wood. Square bill just squares right up to it and just comes across so you won't get hooked, right? So that's why I really like using it in the summertime because the bass will be hung up and you know, they'll, they'll, they'll congregate around sunken trees and around branches and any kind of woody cover looking for bugs and insects and bait fish. And you can work this through. You fish it slower, you know, work it through. You gotta work it through that cover. Don't just crank on it and bring it on through like you would normally a deep diving crankbait, but work it through that cover. When you feel it hit the cover, slow a little bit, and you can do one of two things. Just tighten up down on the line and let it come across, or like this one, it's buoyant. So you just pause it, it'll float up above that cover, then start winding it again, it'll take back off again. So square bill crankbaits are a great way to fish uh, you know, woody cover in the summertime when the bass are feeding on bait fish. So that's why it's on my list of baits during the summer. So those are some of the top baits I like to throw in the summertime. Now I know I probably didn't mention one of your favorite lures. That doesn't mean it doesn't work in the summer. They do. That these are my top confidence baits that I always have tied on. Yes, I'll throw other baits and I will catch fish on other baits. But if you really want to narrow down your choices and have something on on the on board or you know when you're bank fishing, have it with you in your tackle box, 
and you want to make sure that you can catch fish no matter what the circumstances, one of these baits is going to do the job for you. I hope that helps. For more tips and tricks like this, visit BassResource.com.